police here in the capital start Saturday off investigating two murders, a double shooting and a police-involved shooting were on those scenes. She's doing her part to help the organization that gave her a second chance to live. But this time, it's not the usual fundraiser. Find out what this doctor and breast cancer survivor plans on doing. And how about going around the world without leaving home? Well, if you are at this festival today, that's exactly what you got the chance to do. Stay close. The Bahamas Tonight Weekend Edition starts right now. Covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. It is great to have you with us for the Weekend Edition. I'm Clint Watson reporting tonight. A busy Saturday for police as they're involved in a shooting called to investigate a double, a double shooting and two murders, the most shocking, a young teenage girl reportedly at the hands of a relative. Detectives called to the scene of those incidents within hours of each other this morning, but senior police officials want you to know that they're going to solve these matters in just a few days. Our Altavis Munnings has been following these stories the entire day and begins our coverage with the police's investigations into those double murders. Police were called to the intersection of Sunward South and Sunshine Way in the Sunshine Park area of New Providence shortly after 10 o'clock this morning to investigate a murder. Now, what Assistant Police Commissioner Hewlin Hanna told us was that authorities discovered the body of a teenager, a female, at a home through this corner, and they took into custody an immediate male relative. But so far, ACP Hanna could not say whether or not a motive has been determined. Arriving on the scene, they went to a, an apartment complex where they found the lifeless body of a young female, believed to be about 15, with a significant injury to the neck. Um, that person, um, we, we, we were able to arrest a male um, relative, an immediate male relative at the scene. He is in custody. He's believed to be about 47 years old. We do not know the circumstances surrounding this particular incident, but uh, we should have this cleared up pretty, pretty soon. Mr. Hanna, to my understanding, the suspect that police have in custody is the father of the victim. Can you confirm that? Yes, we, we can confirm that based on the information we have. Now, while police have yet to officially identify the victim, ZNS News was able to obtain a photo of the teenager, whom we understand from neighbors is Rache Gibson. Family members informed us she attended the C.V. Bethel Senior High School. While ACP Hanna maintains that this incident surfaced from a domestic dispute, he's advising families facing hostility or tension to address it immediately or call the police for help. At the end of the day, if you can't get a grip on what is disturbing you as a family, what happens is that because you're in the same house, you're sleeping together, you're eating together, and so all of that, it's like a, it's like a, a melting pot, and in a little while you will have... A, a triggering event. We ask their God that you will just pull up the of the victim's family was lifted in prayer during a vigil outside the home, spearheaded by Pastor Evan Roll of Redeeming of the Time Ministries, who just happened to be in the area with his wife and decided to call on God during this troubling ordeal. God ain't asking much of us. All he asking for us is just you know, seek him in spirit and in truth and to be our neighbor's keeper. And you know, this is a moment now when we all should, you know, get together as neighbors and, you know, hear one another pain, you know, and, and cry one another cry, you know, and just live as one. It isn't the praise prayer that came through this corner this morning because someone said, Lord, wake me up. And I be all through the corner and on the porch preaching and talking to the young people. And we have a good community, but something went wrong. Perhaps we need to see more of these things in communities where people who have direct access to a higher power bring our people who are hurting, bring them together and try to stave off some of these very, very unfortunate situations. Well, several hours before heading to Sunshine Park, detectives had to get up early to probe a murder at the Juju Club on Johnson Road in Fox Hill. We saw a shirt, a bloody paper, some blood on the road, and the crime scene tape, which was evidence that authorities were there. They found a white Honda vehicle parked just uh, near an apartment, just near a building. 
and uh, there was a lone occupant in there. And this person was in the front seat, the passenger side, with gunshot injury to the head and to the upper body. It was here on Grand Street in Fox Hill where the country's latest murder victim lived. Now, he was at the club with family and friends just minutes before he died. One of those family members was his mother, Evelyn, who was very distraught by the loss of a second son. And he said he was going home, and I was going home. He was catching a ride, and I was catching a ride, and we was going in separate cars. And I heard he got shot. Me and my baby was together and I call her. When I hear they shoot him, they say, wrongs just get shoot, they shoot wrongs. I say, Cena, Cena, come, come. I say, let's go, they just kill my son, they just kill my son. And we come with the car and the truck where she was on, we just run to the car. We saw him just sitting in the car with the blood just draining down his face. It was affecting me bad, I just lose the son at least three years back and now to lose the son of one is very hard. The victim's mother identified her son as Stephen Davis Jr. Now the mother and his father, Stephen Davis Sr., want justice for their family. One murder gone on sword, now another murder. Can't deal with it. Need some answers. And the Bahamas need to um, open up their minds and open up their hearts and um, stop hiding things and, you know, stop doing the bad things. And if you know somebody doing bad things, you need to speak out and um, show them up. Because one day it would happen to you just like it happened to me. Now police advise anyone with any information on any of these murders to contact them as soon as possible. Altavis Munnings, CNS News. Great work, Altavis. Well, two men are hospitalized in serious condition after being shot last night. Police say the victims were walking in the area of Bar 20 corner off Mackey Street around 10 p.m. when the incident occurred. And that earlier in the night, two males were walking through that area uh, when someone pulled up in a vehicle, opened fire on them. Um, one person was shot to the, in fact, both persons were shot. One is in serious condition at hospital. Uh, the other is receiving medical care as well. At this point, we do not know um, the sequence of events that may have led to this particular incident. Well, the bloodshed continued just before heading to Sunshine Park. Authorities rushed to Superwash on Blue Hill Road South after they received word that two armed men were in the area. ACP Hannah tells us what happened when police arrived on the scene. Just be aware of your environment. Be aware of what is going on around you. And if you see anything out of the ordinary, try to get out of the area. Sound the alarm, call the police and let us come in. Because it, it may be that if you act otherwise, you may be caught up in the free of so many other things that seem to be happening this weekend. The hand indicated that a manhunt is underway for the second suspect as investigations continue into those two murders and a double shooting all within hours of each other. ACB Hanna says he knows the public is alarmed at the rate of crime, but authorities are working around the clock to ensure safety. Well, just days before the shooting in the Johnson Road area, Fox Hill MP Fred Mitchell expressed a concern about crime in that community. He feels the PLP's Urban Renewal 2.0 is one of the answers to the country's crime problem. That program would engage the community in the crime fight, and Mitchell believes that one of the steps needed to turn crime statistics around is that. And it's that together with the coercive measures using the police. The law is also a part of it, but largely the outreach to the community trying to get the community to engage in resolving the larger issue of why people are attacking one another, why people may be killing one another, why people are engaged in drug activity, all of those antisocial behaviors. The only way you can resolve it is by a concerted social intervention. 